Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inside Procurement, our video forum where we speak to procurement leaders of today about the issues that matter most. We're back with the fourth in our series of videos with Paul Coppins, where we talk about a number of different issues that are particularly salient, particularly prominent for procurement executives today. And in today's video, we're gonna tackle the issue of supplier engagement. So welcome back, Paul. So Paul, as we kick off this topic of supplier engagement, how do you think about which suppliers deserve uh, engagement, that they deserve our time and that we should focus on them? How do you think about uh, segmenting, tiering suppliers in this regard? Yes, indeed, Omer. It's impossible to do it again with every single supplier. But uh, I believe there are two ways uh, to look at this. First of all, the reactive way. And that's probably what most companies are doing. They look at the basic performance of suppliers in terms of reliability uh, and quality performance. They could add some crisis management and capacity improvement uh, that will fall in the same bucket. And in case we see issues that need attention to become better, uh, we try to fix them. But it's really looking at the short term uh, of things, and it's a very reactive mode. Again, most companies uh, are at that stage. Taking it a level higher, you're moving to the proactive way of doing things and really engaging with your suppliers. And then I see two major buckets. One, I, I would look at the midterm improvements. Um, it's really working on a continuous basis on the robustness of the quality and the productivity gains at your supplier to become more efficient. It's embedding the output really of the risk assessment that we talked about uh, to determine what needs to be done to reduce the risk. So that's also supplier engagement. And we'll also be looking at areas to reduce, for example, overall lead time and become much better at managing our company's inventory. So the time horizon here, as these are bigger projects in nature, I would say it's three to 12 months. And then the really long-term benefits that can be gained through really in-depth value stream mapping uh, of the processes that we engage on with our suppliers could be full processes or just part of a process. But we need to deep dive uh, on, on how to handle those. Um, and a number of advanced value levers that we typically always took a look at are supply chain planning, supplier management, manufacturing and operations, uh, quality, warehousing and transportation. You'll be amazed how much there is to grasp in the area of warehousing and transportation. Yeah. No need to explain that for all of these, we had the right tools and practices and techniques in place uh, to perform those deep dives. So dependent on the number of opportunities that are out there, uh, it may take from one to three years even to really implement um, all the plans for improvement that, that you agreed upon. Sometimes there's a list of 14 to 20 different projects, you cannot handle everything at once. So it really takes time. Defining who to engage with is, is really, again, a cross-functional uh, matter based upon, for example, the Kraliage uh, matrix that we all know about that sets out your suppliers in terms of readiness and, and against the opportunity that's out there to improve. Um, and in each of those dimensions, you'll need to define jointly with all the other functions, uh, what you'll be assessing uh, moving forward and as such trying to improve your supplier base. So, so one idea that keeps coming up is, you know, when we think about supply engagement, there's a lot of factors that you just talked through that have to get considered. Now, um, th there's always this idea when we talk about supplier engagement and SRM more broadly, we talk about value and mutual value in particular. And I know we touched on this in our first video uh, in this series, but what does, what does mutual value mean in a practical sense? How, how, how does you, you translate that? In my opinion, mutual value is really sharing the benefits that you will get out of an engagement uh, that you participate on uh, with the supplier. That's in a nutshell summarizing it. 
does, does that mean that it always needs to be, for example, 50-50? No, not at all. But very critical is that when you start such a long-term engagement with the supplier, um, it is important to discuss this, this aspect up front. Um, these are long-term initiatives. Uh, that also means a lot of resources on our side and on the supplier side. Think of it, all these cross-functional departments that need to collaborate together. No supplier is going to say, yes, I will do this if he doesn't see the benefits or doesn't get a part of the benefits. So it could be any percentage or even for every sub-project, you could set up uh, a different sharing. I've even lived a case where we had the agreement, we're going to do it 50-50. And at the end of the project, the supplier was so thrilled about the outcome because he saw opportunities to extrapolate this to the rest of it, uh, their customer base that they told us, look, you're going to get it all. Isn't that nice? That's through partnership. And I'm not suggesting that we're going to get this every time, but it's a nice example how things can work. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. And, and that's actually a great example. So, so then what do you think are some of the most fundamental parameters that, that form that foundation of what we think of as successful supplier engagement? Yeah, I think the overall objectives of building the partner's capabilities drives improved competitiveness. And I think that's pretty clear. But to get there, we will need to understand the current performance uh, and our customer needs, control the risk, optimum quality for every material and so on. We're trying to accelerate change. Also teach our partners, our uh, key strategic suppliers, how to best communicate with us, surface issues much, much quicker than we were used to, and define really uh, good and solid improvement plans. Uh, that will build stronger relationship and transparency between our companies. Um, and think of the joint, to jointly develop and build capabilities. We get access to our suppliers' know-how, and they get access to our internal network of SMEs and best practices. Um, but to do it right, we will need to have the right governance uh, on, on both sides. You'll need to have a sponsor, a key program manager, and then a representation of all the relevant functions. And critical again is to mirror those resources. A function present in our company also needs to be present at the supplier end. Um, also realizing that in the beginning of an engagement, it will be us as a company driving uh, the engagement and gradually moving forward when we move towards implementation of all the action plans, it's really the supplier going to take over uh, and really be in the driver's seat. And that makes the collaboration even stronger. It's a proven methodology. It really works well. So one last question for you on this topic, and, and that is, how would you monitor and measure the success of a supplier engagement program? Yeah, um, I, I think, as I mentioned before, out of an engagement, you get a whole list of opportunities. Uh, typically, what I've seen was 15 to 20 smaller projects that come out of this. You need to prioritize those as a team. Once prioritized, you start to work on them. And you have the regular follow-up meetings um, that go into some dashboard that you can create to see, okay, did we hit the deadline uh, of project A, B, C, and so forth. That is one aspect. The other aspect, uh, obviously, is really about some projects will deliver dollar savings. So you need to track whether they deliver on the promise. And that can go through your company savings tracker. And then last but not least, for me, a very critical one is try to embed this work into the SRM model. If as a company, you have a supplier scorecard, make it part of the scorecard, because if a supplier delivers on the promise, he may be able to get higher points and grow uh, into overall performance with us as a company. So that's very powerful. Fantastic. Well, 
great perspectives, great thoughts there on this on this important topic and one that's been really evolving as well in recent years. So thanks very much. Uh, that wraps up our conversation on supplier engagement. We'll be back with the fifth and final in our video series with Paul. And the next topic will be on supplier-enabled innovation. Thanks very much.